93% of online entrepreneurs earn less than $100 a week. It's amazing. This is primarily due to their inability to retain qualified leads and often caused by their distracting and unfocused amateurish behavior on camera. The uh, video maestro, our guest today, steps in as a pivotal solution provider offering the Missing Link, a program designed to equip these entrepreneurs with the necessary skills and confidence to present themselves as the go-to experts in their niche and on camera. This transformation allows them to make a strong first impression and quickly gain trust by addressing these two critical issues of most every prospect. Consequently, they can convert significantly more prospects into customers and importantly, profit. This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step tech easy system for getting leads online. Are you struggling to get leads from your lead magnet? Are you tired of seeing low conversion rates and losing potential customers? It's time to revive your lead magnet and start attracting more leads. Download our free report, 10 Deadly Lead Magnet Mistakes That Are Costing You Leads, and learn how to create a high converting lead magnet that engages your audience and drives conversions. Don't let common mistakes hold you back any longer. Revive your lead magnet today and download your free report at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash deadly. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show. I'm Paul Guyon, your host, Lead Machine Coach, and the founder and of the Lead Machine Mastermind Group. I'm dedicated to helping you tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. So whether you're just starting out or taking your business to the next level, let's get this conversation started. Today's guest is Roy Varner. He has a remarkable, that's Roy, V-A-R-N-E-R, for those who are wanting to get his name, especially the chat bot, uh, has a remarkable 40-year career developing major learning systems and producing and directing award-winning video and film for Fortune 500 companies. He's also a published author with Random House and Amazon.com having authored a score of marketing and technical books and publications for clients' business training. Roy is a professional photographer with an eye for detail, as you can tell from his background, and now he's known as the video maestro coach for the missing link of on-camera branding and profitable lead generation. Uh, I met Joe, uh, or I met Roy online through, I think, Katja Rasanen, who was also a guest on the Lead Machine Growth Show. And uh, we we met, we hit it off, we talked a little bit, and I've been trying to get him on, and I finally convinced him to come on board. So, uh, Roy, welcome. Thank you so much for coming today, sir. It's a, it's a great day here in Michigan. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well, and I really appreciate the invitation. Of course, of course. Uh, so, how many entrepreneurs are actually making good money online and how come? Well, it's hard to really know because everyone brags about it. All the gurus online tell you how much money they're making and they show their cars and their bank accounts. Yeah. But I've talked to uh, some major gurus, the, the many million dollar gurus, and they confide that 97% of their people never even get through the program material never make the leap, never get cloned to that new mindset and that and that new way of being productive. So you have to assume that the number is less than 3% that are actually making a really good living online. Well, if you think about it, 
there's probably only 2% of the, of the world's population who are really successful. Uh, the rest of them, if you, if you follow Napoleon Hill, he wrote a book uh, called uh, Outwitting the Devil, and which was fine was just re released in the last 10 years. Uh, he wrote, a, he wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, but he also wrote the book Outwitting the Devil. And he, and he says that the two there's only 2% of the people that are, are really successful in the world. And the rest of us are drifters. And we, we have so many distractions. Uh, we're so, we're, I like to say squirrel. Hey, there's a squirrel yeah. there. Uh, or shiny. There's a shiny, shiny thing that we're all chasing. And uh, it's really, uh, with, with the way social media is and the way, the way uh, the world is, I think the world is designed to keep you off the off your game and to keep you off of what's important. Do you agree with that? Absolutely agree with that. And a, a large part of it is that people lack the focus that will get them out of their old limited ways of thinking and into new and better ways. And the problem is that everybody thinks, well, we can just self-study. And in fact, 97% of the programs out there are, are not coaching. They're not learning programs, even though you're paying many thousands of dollars for them. They are sharing information, which is cognitive, right? And they are doing rah-rah, which is a little emotional. But there's no affective learning process. That's part of Bloom's taxonomy, that you have to reach people where they are and pry loose their old assumptions to get new and better and higher assumptions, or there's no real change. So no matter how many programs you spend money on, no matter how many times you go, if they are not mentoring learning processes, baby step at a time over time, they don't work. And what I learned in 40 years of developing learning programs is that there's a, there's a way the human mind thinks, and there's a way that people are willing to open up and change and step out of their, their comfort circle. But in the online world of video, and particularly with COVID, which chased everybody home and away from all getting together personally, there's a, there's a major resistance. Part of it is lack of confidence. Part of it is lack of skill. But there's a major resistance for people to get on camera. And when they get on camera, they don't know what to do about it. So this is what I call the missing link. It's the yeah. area that people are falling down. It's what's keeping most of those 97% from making a living. Because instead of drawing people to them and connecting with them as a professional who gets a great first impression and engenders trust, they're doing all these distracting things and looking and sounding bad and just chasing everybody off because who wants to give all the money to somebody that looks like an amateur? And yeah. that's what it boils down to. There just hasn't been good training out there for people to fill this gap of the missing link. Gotcha. And is that the elephant in the room, that, that distraction? It is the huge elephant because I, even my workshops and when I talk to people, they get a few ideas and then they think, oh, okay, well, I'm better. No, no, there's a lot to it. It is the big elephant. People don't realize that the average person has more than two dozen major things that they do say the way they look that are turnoffs, that are distractions. I call them voodoos, video voodoos, yeah. because they curse your conversions of clients and they yeah. haunt your, your reputation forever until you get rid of them. You're either drawing and attracting people as a professional that everybody can quickly trust and, and believe in, or you're not. There's two questions that everybody asks you and I and everybody when we go looking for help. And the first one is, do you understand my problem and my situation? How much pain I'm in, right? Yeah. And secondly, do I trust you to be the one to walk me to my solution? And, it, and you can't answer those two if you look and sound like an amateur and you have all these distracting habits. Right. And I'm trying to be on my best behavior. Let me tell, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> no, you're, you're one of the few hosts I've been with that actually looks and sounds pretty good. Okay. Well, so thank you. You don't have any, any major issues going on. Well, my nose is itching. I'm not going to scratch it, though. So uh, tell me a little bit more about the Missing Link program, the uh, Video Maestro program, and what does it provide? Well, 
I have a I have a big program that, that goes many weeks, okay, to give the full transition from basically being a victim on camera to being a master, yeah. right? Yeah. It's that victim mentality. It's that it's that feeling that you're an imposter. It's that feeling that I'm not really sure what to do or how am I going to get these people interested or over talking or under talking or whatever, you know, yeah. it's a mentality. But once you go through my big program, it's a different process. But what, what I lead into that with, I always recommend that everybody goes through my three day challenge because it gives them an awareness and a boost in their self confidence right off in just three one hour sessions. Because once you are aware of the things you're doing that, that are off putting, then you can you can take care of them. It's it's a human nature that we are used to ourselves. And so we can't see our foibles. You know, we do not see the things that a stranger walking in the room and listening to us will automatically get. We all yeah. see patterns. We can all spot patterns with a stranger, but with ourselves, it's part of our our way of thinking, right? So we well, have know, to get yeah. help. Yeah, it's it's the same way with coaching. You know, uh, it's so easy for me to say, okay, you know, I can give you some tips that you should be you should be following. Oh, I know, I just see it right away, right away. But yet, do I see that in myself? Not so easily, and it's not so easily like like def deciding on a niche. I could coach someone to 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 uh, who has certain expertise and say, okay, here that's that's a bit broad, but had you thought about this, that's really easy to do. But for me, boy, is it hard because, you know, I can do so many things, you know, I can teach people to sing. I can teach people to, you know, I, I play the drums. I, you know, there's all these different things that I can solve, but uh, that's not how you become an expert. Um, that's not how you position yourself as an expert. And, and so it's, it's the same, it's the same thing as when you're on camera. So having that, having that critical eye like you have uh, to, to help guide people through, I think would be valuable. Um, get, so can you give us a, an example? I mean, using me as an example, uh, you've already given me a tip that I uh, adopted. I don't know if you notice, I have different glasses on than, than the first time we met uh, so that you can see my eyes. And I actually have a new, a new, little, a new little toy called the, the FlexiCam. And I don't know if you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm almost, I have it, like my camera is almost, it's like on top of your head. Uh, and I'm looking in, looking, I'm looking, it's hard not to look into your eyes. Uh, so we have, cause, cause people want to look into your eyes, but yeah. a lot, when you're on zoom, uh, you're looking, you're a lot of times you're looking like this. You're looking off at the person who's, who's talking and you're, you're over here. And so, and, and when I was introducing the show, I had some notes up. And so I was looking to the side of the camera, uh, reading my notes. And then I moved the notes underneath the camera. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, you have a critical eye. You probably did. Maybe, maybe other listeners didn't notice that, but I learned that just from talking to you and saying, oh, I need to, I need to up my game with, if I'm going to be on camera, uh, I need to up my game so that I'm, I'm more of a pro. So what are some examples besides the ones that I, you can do? And maybe you can coach me a little bit uh, on what you can fix w with people who work on Zoom with their clients. Well, when you think about it, what's really most important is eye contact. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a lot of things. That's a lot hard, of things too. Around it because there's the lighting. If you've if you got shadows under your eye and under your nose and stuff, if you've got shiny spots on your face, you know, all that relates to it. What, what you want to get is a natural looking skin and plenty of eye contact so people can actually tell the color of your eyes because the eyes are the window to the soul. They truly are. They are how we kindred spirits connect with each other. Yeah. You're not talking to everybody out there. You're talking to your ideal prospects, the ones that can relate to you and appreciate who you are and what you have to say. And the only way to connect with them is to get all the distractions out of the way in many areas. Number one, camera framing. Most people don't frame themselves properly. They're too close, too far. Their eyes are way down in the lower part of the screen. They got way too much headroom. All kinds of things with camera. You mean framing. like this? Yeah, 
many people do like that. Many gurus live like that. Okay. And the thing is, it's not that everybody, you know, instantly says, okay, too much headroom because they're not trained to think that way. Yeah. Psychologically, we automatically, automatically feel uncomfortable because things aren't balanced. They're not symmetrical. They're not whatever. They're not what we would expect of a, of a pro, right? Yeah. So the camera positioning is critical. Lighting is absolutely critical. We've got to get the lighting so your face is the lightest thing in the screen. It's clean and clear. It's like you're across the desk from me. Yeah. It's a natural feel across the desk from me, right? Sound. Got to get your audio so that it's not distracting. It's not, it doesn't have to be, you know, blend back deep talk, like that sort of thing. Yeah. It, it needs to be not distracting and easy to listen to. And you need to sound like a real person across this, the desk from us, right? Then we got background, and there's three types of background. There's the distracting background that has all kind of stuff in it. I have detail stuff in my background because I use the analogy and metaphor approach when I tell stories and talk to people. I'll pull uh -huh. something off my desk, like my camera, and I'll talk about, you know, you got to have the right equipment, and I'll and I'll relate that to to their work on camera. So. But distracting backgrounds would have all kind of pictures that you that draw your eye and attention. What is that over there? A big mobile, you know, anything that just takes your attention away. And then it's how you look physically. Are you wearing clothes that are appropriate and that are flattering to you? And then yeah. the color of the background. So the, the three backgrounds are distracting, neutral, or signature. And so in my short program, we just we deal mostly with distracting. But in the big program, I teach them how to create a more neutral background with their logo, kind of the sense and feel that you've got going there. You've got a neutral blue, and we can see your logo. Yeah. I'd probably make it bigger just, uh -huh. uh, just to make it a little easier for people to read and connect to. Not too much bigger because you don't want it taken over, but just a little bit. Uh, but these are all the, the pieces. You first have to get rid of the distracting behaviors and all that sort of stuff. That's half of it. Then we get into these professional techniques and just a handful, you'd be surprised how few changes it takes to suddenly make somebody look pretty good. You yeah. just have to know what those changes are and how to deal with the lighting and how to deal with all that stuff. And then the confidence, which is the number one goal for all coaches is to get that person confident. If they're confident, they'll get up in the morning and do it. They'll stick with the program. They'll work it. Yeah. And confidence starts the minute these things start to clear out and you see how good you look on camera and you say, wow, this is good stuff. You know, I feel a lot better already. I've had, I've had so many people come to me and say, I'm terrified of being on camera, I'm terrified of being on camera. And once we get, get them through about three sessions, that's gone because the reason for being terrified was they were totally focused on themselves and, and how they were afraid to look stupid. I mean, public speaking is the number one fear. After. Yeah. Public humiliation is the number so, one. Public yeah. humiliation. I mean, you're just uh -huh. afraid to get up there and everybody's going to think you're stupid. And it's it's part of that, that imposter syndrome because you haven't quite got a sense of your brand and your value, which is what we do in my big program. We get people all the way to a great brand and a signature background. And then we ripple that brand to all of the other stuff they do. So it's, you know, it's, it's a long process, but the initial process is, get the first three steps, get some confidence, feel better about yourself. Makes It makes a huge difference, just that amount. Yeah. Now, I, like I said, you, you and I talked, I don't know, a month or two ago, and I went out and got the glasses and, and uh, started using them. And I went, yeah, you can see my eyes better now, and you can tell my eyes are green. A and, really uh, good thing about your glasses, you did a good job in two areas. One is you've got the, the non-glare surface. So it's yeah. not it's not flashing lights every time you move or tilt your head. Secondly, you got a frame that's kind of goes away and sort of blends in to your face. Yeah. And when people look at you, I mean, until you mentioned that, I forgot that you changed your glasses. Yeah, I was looking at your eyes. You see, so that's exactly what you're supposed to do. No, it's, and I also move my light. If I tilt my head back, you can see my ring light. Right. But I moved, I tilted it back. So, 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 uh, 
you don't see it a lot of times i i saw perry belcher he has an ad on on uh he's a he's a pro copywriter he's got an ad on facebook and when he he came on camera his his ring lights were right there in the middle yeah and and uh and i went boy roy could work with him (laughs) you'd be surprised surprised how many video voodoos the big gurus have they just have a lot of money and people and joint venture support so they can throw volume out there to be successful we can't do that you know we don't have the millions of dollars so we we've, we've got to compete we have to get rid of these distractions that yeah they live with but they and, have you know, after having met you and and really thinking about all this stuff i think you know what is this blue background the best background my favorite color is blue and that's why my that's why i have blue in my in my uh my brand color for for my lead machine programs and but then i discovered that gosh most of my shirts are blue and some of them are dark so i probably shouldn't be wearing a dark blue shirt on against my blue background <laughs> and uh and also a lot i like stripes and so I have a lot of stripes and, and checkered shirts, which are really not great on camera because they reflect. And then you can go white, but white reflects too. So I have I have white today with uh, with a little cover up. So there's a little bit of color here. There's a little bit of white. So you can see, uh, you know. So I'm dressed up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, there's there's really an art and a and a definite process to go through for color matching and clothes clothing style. Yeah, yeah. Most people have two styles if if they're smart they've got their own personal style where they dress up and put color and crazy stuff and stripes and whatever it is that makes them feel good makes them have fun right but if you Mm -hmm. want to be a coach and you want people to see you right and instantly trust you that's a different look and that's the look that i teach people online and it's not a bad look it's just toned down It, it eliminates the distractions it draws attention to the face. It's colors that make your skin look good. So in balancing that, we I would probably try a bunch of different blue backgrounds with you, including yeah. some that have some texture and swirls and stuff in it, and see which one makes your the skin tone look the best. Uh-huh. That'd be the one I'd pull out. And then when you have your clothing, you just don't have clothes that exactly match the background, so they yeah. disappear. You wear the darker blues or a little bit lighter blues. White and black are the worst to use and bright yeah. colors. They're right. all distracted. They just, they take away attention from your eyes and from your message. When we say from your eyes, it implies your message, what you're saying. You're answering those two questions of people where you start with their problem and make sure they understand you know their problem. And then you tell them your story of how you've been there, done that, and then learn to share it with other people. And now you can help people fix their problems. That's the trust process. That's the no like and trust that people get. And if you do it right, and if you look and sound right, it's the whole package together, people give you instant trust. They don't doubt it. They only doubt it when you have all these distractions and your head low and that sort of thing. I mean, I had one lady, I was trying to trying to coach her, and she says, should I put my teeth in? And then I had another. I had another <laughs> lady that uh, just insisted on broadcasting from her bedroom and you can see the bed in the bathroom and and one day yep her husband walks through in the background naked going to the shower <laughs> so uh it's the distractions that kill <laughs> us when we get rid of the distractions and when we're confident that we know we're talking to the right people and it's all about them it isn't about us it's about them it's about yeah. helping focusing on the problem, we are going to be like a magnet to those few, but big, but enough for our business, individuals that resonate with our frequency of what we're saying and doing. Okay. That's our goal. Eliminate the distractions and be a magnet to the people that really need what we have and relate to us and our personality in the way we are, right? Everybody's different. Yeah. Not everybody likes Roy Varner and but people do. There are people that really relate to me because I'm talking their language. I'm talking about what they need fixed in a yeah. way that they feel comfortable that we can do that. 
and you can't be all things to all to everyone anyway and you don't want to be and and some some people are polarizing some people aren't but some people uh you know just don't like you don't like your face they don't like your the way you talk or or who your guests are or whatever or your colors uh and that's okay uh yeah, what do you, you don't need everybody and you, you couldn't you couldn't help everybody no I mean, you couldn't you're, you're gonna be lucky to help the ones that you draw once you get yourself already but the key is to be your real self these people that get on and try to be like the gurus and silver tongue devil and follow these formulaic stuff be yourself and then people will know what they're getting and then when you take them through your program they like you they like what you do so you're not going to have people drop out because you were one thing in selling and yet you're a total different being in the, in the program itself you want to sell yourself your real self and that's that's what's fun about life when you get to be yourself on camera yeah all the fear goes away because it's fun right right and it has value and it answers your why everybody's got a why why am i doing this why am i helping these people with this particular problem you know because you care about people that you love to help people but you want them to have to to lose all the stress and the pain and to thrive personally emotionally and financially that's what we're all about right yeah so when you're your real self you will attract your real people that will stick with you and love you and be your raving fans. Yeah, I agree. And you know, one thing that was, that comes to mind, uh, I'm of course I'm somewhat new on camera. I've been, I've been in front of people and audiences for my entire life. Cause I'm a musician and, and, uh, but when you see yourself on camera and when you record it and you play it back, you know, there it's, there it's different. Uh, and I think that there's, there's, okay, you're not going to be perfect the first time out. And my show has been, uh, this show has been evolving. Uh, I started out with audio only and, and I just said, I've got to go video because there's just so much opportunity for uh, uh, authenticity. When you see, when you see the interactions with between me and the guests and uh, you know, it, it's just so much more important to be on camera. And so, so that took a little bit of time. And then I had to, I played around with backgrounds and I'm still doing that. And, and uh, with the presentation of my show, so it's okay, especially if you have a podcast and it's your show, it's okay to change you. It's your show. You can, you can do it. You can evolve as you go. And I, I'm sure that you've gone through that uh, trial and error phase too with you with the Fortune 500 companies. Oh, listen, uh, let me tell you, <laughs> I've I've been with every type of person, every type of situation over the years. I mean, from corporate executives to truck drivers to everybody, and it's you you understand after a while that it is human nature. We all really follow similar patterns of thinking. Some are a little more introvert. Some are a little more extrovert you know, etc. But we judge everything emotionally. We make decisions emotionally and we justify them logically. The logic is to make us feel like we didn't do something stupid with this. Yeah. Emotion, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's all about emotions. And remember that 10% of the meaning that we want to communicate and of the connection we want to make is words. Only 10%. So if all they do is read your email or read your book, they're only getting 10% of what you could communicate and connect. 38% is tone of voice. How you say it is much more important than what you say. How you say it is critical, right? And that's, that's audio. That's an audio podcast. But that leaves 52%, which is body language. Yeah. But you can see, body language is the critical aspect of connecting with people and interrelating and, and finding your kindred spirits. We can't always describe what our kindred spirit looks like, but we feel it. We know it. We know when it isn't, and we know when it is, right? So being on camera is a critical thing, and being, for people to be able to have all the distractions out of the way and be able to look at your eyes, relate to you, that's what it's all about. When you get there, you'll get your fair share of conversions. You'll find people coming to you because they heard your message, they feel the real person that you are, and they connected with you. They say, I think I've found my guy or my lady, right? 
yeah. the go-to expert in your niche, they're convinced you're it. Why should I look any farther? Because I feel great about this person, right? That's how you right. do it. That's how you make the connections. Right. So let's let's go back a little bit, though, Roy. Um, we've kind of started in the middle because you and I, we've, we've had this ongoing conversation. Yeah. But you had this, at some point along the, you weren't always the video maestro. And uh, you oh, were no. probably... You, yeah. How did how did it all start for you in, in just a few minutes, so that we know kind of know where where you're coming from and yeah. uh, and how you how you became this this uh, this expert that you obviously are. Yeah, I started with still photography in in high school. You uh-huh. know, the old graphite cameras with the flash bulb. We won't we'll go into that. But I, early on, I was a, a writer. I loved expressing words and. I love photography. So I went to college and graduated with a special honors in radio TV film because I really wanted to get into that. Okay. And so that got me going in producing videos. And then the learning programs just kind of evolved. I ran into a guy at Shell Oil that needed a training program done. And I thought, well, I can do that. I didn't know how, you know, I just, I went off and studied how, and I did that and that started it. And that evolved into, one summer where I did 40 videos, 40 training videos for them and traveling all over the country for Shell. And then that led to another one where I I did a handle with special care learning system to teach people what their prospects want and expect. So you know what to give them. And that, that was wildly successful and really solidified my foundation of how people think and what they're looking for, what they want. And, Briefly, it's, I think it's instructive. Take the word care and go backwards. The E is excellence. That's the first thing we want. Do it right the first time. Do exactly what we want right the first time. The R is responsiveness. If it isn't right, fix it. You know, jump on it and fix it for me. Third one is assurance. When I'm not around, act in my best interest. And I know you're acting in my best interest. And the C is for care. Show that you really do care, take the time to do that. That's the foundation of any good program. And people online forget right. about customer care and customer yeah. service, right? Too many that, do, yeah. It's it's too impersonal. These big companies, you know, you can barely get to talk to somebody. It's so hard to. So it's a big, wild, crazy world. But the personal connection to people and have people trust you involves that C-A-R-E. You're doing that to people when you're a coach, when you're online talking to them and giving them information and walking them through their problems, you're exhibiting all of those things. So I learned, excuse me, I learned along the way how the human mind wants to receive information in order to be willing to change. And the whole trick is you got to quit being the, the curse of knowledge expert, core dumping information on people that you think they should run off and, and use, like Nike's just do it. Well, this won't let you just do it. Your psyche doesn't let you just change and get out of your comfort zone, right? So what we want to do is be the facilitator of the change environment and process. And how we do that, we create an image on camera when we're talking to people that gives them the trust in us that we really can and will do that, that it will be a safe journey. And that's important for all of us. We've got to give people a safe journey so they'll be willing to, one at a time, let go of these old long-held assumptions and embrace new ways of thinking and behaving that are up there where they want to be. Like Einstein said, we can't get up there with the thinking and habits and behavior that got us where we are. We can't teach ourselves to go up there because we don't know what's up there. And we haven't embraced what's up there. We haven't opened up to what's up there. And we can't do it individually. We have to do it with a a mentor, a coach, and a process that is basically safe and painless. Okay? So that's what I try to do in all my stuff. This confidence just grows naturally. Yeah. when you chip away at all the little pieces, just like with you, you feel better about yourself with your, with your glasses, as you should. You're getting the pieces together, and every time you do something, it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable because yeah. you know 
you look good, right? You know that you're you're appealing to the people you're trying to reach. Yeah, and so getting back to that, the genesis of how you got started, was most of that in instructional programs, or did you do any live TV? Were you on any TV shows? Tell us about that. I I got my real start in it that uh, two things that summer of forty videos. Yeah, that really, I had to travel around the country on Monday and Tuesday in Marietta, Georgia. We shot at a plant. Travel Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. We shot at another place, and I had local talent and local crews, and it was crazy. So it forced me to learn the process and the whole way of doing this stuff. But over the years, I directed so many people on camera and in an audio studio, learning to use emphasis and phrasing, you know, and tone of voice and all that. It just, I saw what worked and I saw what didn't work. And over time, there were very clear patterns of how people think and what makes people connect to you and what chases people away. And so I evolved that into this program. Yeah. And we, we are creatures of pattern. You mentioned that I, I can quickly spot a problem. Well, when you've seen thousands of things, right? But <laughs> that, it's easy to find. Look at somebody, their, their problems jump out at you, right? They're right. Voodoo are obvious and and as you listen to them talk and do f sort of things it's it's really easy to to pick a plan i'm not gonna i have never been a proponent of teaching video a to z because yeah. no nope, you don't need it you need the gaps fixed you know right you need to eliminate the voodoos and then we got to fill the gaps and that's gotcha that's the critical focus let's just focus on what's wrong get rid of the stuff that you can get rid of and stop doing that's in your control and then adopt new techniques, just little changes here and there. And all of a sudden you've got the problem solved without having to, you know, go to A to Z. You know, I have uh, a, uh, a client and a coworker uh, that uh, she's really smart. She knows her craft really well. And she, uh, she does, some really short clips videos to, to teach people how to do certain things in the design space. She is an, an Adobe illustrator. Uh, and, but she won't talk. She won't narrate. So what are some things that you can do to help entrepreneurs who are afraid to either be on camera, uh, they're shy or they, they won't talk. A quick example. I, I had a, a, a an email coach who wouldn't go on camera. She has a picture of herself. She even teaches courses that way and never goes on camera. You hear her voice, you see her picture, which happens to be a dolled up picture of her about 10 years ago, <laughs> much thinner and much prettier, right? Yeah. So well. she, she felt bad about herself. She has thick glasses. When she has to look through the bottom of the glasses, you see up her nose, she's gained weight, et cetera. Well, her partner was about to die trying to get her to get on camera. It says, we don't care what you look like. You know, the people want to connect with you. They want to see who they're talking to. It's your wisdom yeah. that's important to them. So anyway, I worked with her over a period of time, and I finally, little bits at a time, convinced her that I can help her get on camera and that people will love her. Well, after three sessions... She became what I call a Tasmanian devil. I mean, she is making videos almost every day on YouTube, wow. everything, because she learned it wasn't about her. And I got her looking better, right? I got yeah. her, you know, basically nice looking. So people can make a change, and that's why I, I delay confidence to the third day of my workshop and to third element in my big program because you will gain confidence you'll lose your fear and gain some confidence when you spot the things that are turning people off and you can get rid of them you already you cleared the minefield of distractions that's what we're afraid of we're afraid to get up and say people say oh that's stupid oh you're doing that stupid that was a dumb thing to say right we clear the minefield of that 
now we get you looking and sounding good in those five areas we talked about the camera the lighting the sound the background and how you personally look right once you get somebody to that point here's what they say here's one um, african-american lady who was never properly lit she had a bright background and a medium dark face she put enough light on her to see her face and so it, sh it had a little shiny spots on it she never looked or felt good on camera when we got her set up with the right background and her and her face was lit properly she started crying she i said what's wrong she said i'm so pretty she had never had that experience and then other people do the same thing they look at it and they say oh, gosh i look like i look like a pro coach i mean i look like i've never looked this way right when you yeah. get to that point because of the what you get rid of and what you adopt and change, you get a lot of the confidence that you're going to get. And then we work on other factors to get it off you, get the focus on your people, your message, their pain, your solution to their pain, and listen to them instead of being a core dumper, right? Instead of dumping yeah. information on people, it's, it's the affective parts. It's the emotional parts. We listen to our people. We relate to them. When they feel we understand and when they feel like we're a real person that they can relate to, that's the huge transformation that people get. And the confidence just comes. We don't have to beat it out of somebody. You can't talk somebody out of being afraid. Right. You can't talk them into being confident. You can't raw, raw motivate them into it you, because all that's coming from me. You have to create an environment and an experience that's safe in which they baby step their way win after win after win to higher confidence. But it's their yeah. choice. They, it's like the Socratic dialogue, right? Socrates didn't tell them what to think. He led them into coming up with ideas that he led them to, but he didn't give it to them. And yeah. they chose it, and that way they embraced it. Then they used right. it. They became that. So yeah, that process in any any coaching business is critical. Right, and you you've mentioned process so many times, and uh, I I totally subscribe to the the uh, you have to do things over and over and over again to get them right. So you're not going to you know expect to get it perfect the first time, but as you make as you continue to make little changes and continue doing it. You'll gain the confidence. You'll gain that that visibility that you want and the image that you want. And it, it is a process, and life is a process, and so you're going to evolve over time. And you realize that perfection is a coping habit of people that feel poorly about themselves. Yeah, they're afraid to get out there until it's perfect. Well, it'll never be perfect because there is no perfection in human life. Number one. Secondly. All you need is good enough. It's more eliminating the distractions, being yourself and looking people in the eyes. That's good enough. Yeah. We don't have to be a, have major charisma. We don't have to be a movie star. That's good enough. So good enough is the phrase that we use in my business. Let's tweak it. Let's fix this. Let's change the lighting. Let's do that. That's good enough. It's good enough to no longer be something that attracts their attention. The worst thing that bothers me as a film and video director is when I see a movie where the director has done something that we call director's conceit. And that is something like, for example, the big gurus in town, they'll be looking at you, right? They're looking at you and telling their story. All of a sudden, the camera cuts to an angle over here. Do they turn to the camera? Nope. They're still looking this way talking as though they're talking to somebody, but now we're watching them like a third person. And all of a sudden we have disconnected from this individual. Yeah. That's director's conceit. That makes your, gets your attention to the production. And it ah. doesn't connect you to the person in the message. So everything I do, I don't use a lot of bells and whistles. I keep it simple. Everything I do is to draw attention to your eyes, your face, your personality, your message and get that yeah. great first impression and get that trust. That's what it's all about. So once people realize that perfection is not even 
possible, but it wouldn't do you any good anyway. Good enough gets you there. We can all do good enough, no matter what we look like. You know, I'm not skinny. I'm not young. And same thing with everybody else. <laughs> and the, my friend that hid behind her picture is very heavy. Uh, looks more like a, a linebacker than, than, you know, somebody else. But she, we, she learned that once she got the major distractions out of the way, she got glasses like you did, center rims, nice uh, anti-reflective stuff. We got her lights changed. To where her skin was natural and wasn't shiny. We got the right color on her in, in her clothes in the background. And she said, Well, that's good enough. I got I gotta go do this. This is something I need to do to develop a connection with people. And when she started doing it, she had so much fun. Yeah. It really is fun when you when you get to be yourself and not worry about criticism because you know you're out to attract people that like yourself. People that right resonate with your frequency and then the rest of it doesn't matter it's just it's information that helps people but the ones that you really help just naturally attract to you when you're yourself and that's the fun part and, and just okay. in 15 seconds i want to tell you that i used to live behind the camera i was a i was a writer i was a director a producer an editor all this stuff i was getting other people primed to get out in front of the camera on stage and etc right i did train the trainer workshops i trained people to get up in front of classes i mean i've done that but that's been my life so when i got to the internet i suddenly had to walk the talk i had to take <laughs> yeah medicine yeah and i was thinking about it and i says i don't really want to be on camera well <laughs> if you don't put you your real self and your real message that you care about on camera you don't have visibility. Nobody's going to see you. Nobody's going to know you're there. And nobody, nobody's going to come. Right. So I do the good enough. And it's it's working well because I don't pretend to be anything that I'm not. You, what you see is what you get, right? If it works right. for you, hey, let's connect. Right. So we're getting, we're getting about 45 minutes in. Uh, do you have a little bit more time for some more questions? You bet. You bet. Okay. All right. Uh, we talked about, I know people are going to want to know a little bit about setup and uh, my setup has changed quite a bit. My camera used to be up here, you know, yeah. and I, and uh, now I've got a, a device that's quite, quite distracting because it's, it's my camera is almost in the, the top third of my screen. And I, I can, I'm looking basically at your forehead and uh, I can still see your eyes. So I don't know if I'm looking directly into the camera or not, but uh, you know, I've got, I've got a corner office. And so the reason I have, uh, I, I have this, uh, of course I have this branded background for my show, but I, I have a, a, a different, when I'm on someone else's show, I have a different background. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, well, I can, is, give you, I can give you one hint for everybody. Okay. And it's part of my day two, part of the camera setup stuff, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and it is that the, the most natural look that, it, that would give you 80% of the value of camera framing is to get your eyes a third of the way down from the top of the screen. Right. And so your eyes right now are about a little bit above middle. So yeah. an ideal would be... I should be up a little high. Well, oh. or you can either that, yeah. Now, now see where you are now, see where your eyes are. Yeah. Okay. Then your head is just touching the top of the frame. So I would have you scoot back a little bit, be just a little bit farther from the screen. Now, there you go. Now we're getting into a little, little closer range from where the eyes need to be. And th the fact that you have a logo up there, it, it doesn't matter. That doesn't relate to anything. It's, it's not touching your head. Right. So the, if you can get, even get your eyes a little bit higher, if you could tilt it, the, the camera down just a little bit. Now, this is the kind of stuff we do. We just do little tweaks. And when we get it right and everything's set up right, then what I do is I get people to take a screenshot when they're exactly right and everything is good. This is the way they want to appear to the world. You take a screenshot and you put it, print it and put it right down by your picture. 
So when you sit down to go on video, you look at that screen, you get yourself where you want to be. Like, I want to be a little more in the center, and I want to lean this way a little bit, and whatever, right? You get where your best shot is. And your lights are already set. So all you have to do is flip on the lights, get positioned. You are duplicating your positive brand every time you get on camera, and it's consistent. And the reason that's critical is that 80% of the people need to see you five or six times in a positive way, a positive, consistent brand, before they'll allow themselves to buy. Now, my so, eyes are still a little bit low, aren't they? Your eyes are still just a little bit low, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all relative. I'm, I'm just it's adjusting all, my chair here. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to do a screenshot. How, how is it now? I think that's a good balance. I think you've got a good balance there with everything you've got on. Okay. If you didn't have the headset on, I'd have you a little bit higher in the screen. Gotcha. But, but that has a nice feel. See, now now you've taken away uncomfortable that people just, in inside, they just feel uncomfortable if something's out of whack. I have a friend that I, I, I love him to pieces, but I, I've tried a dozen times, and, it, and I just can't get him to do this. He takes vertical selfies of himself, and his face is in the bottom half of the of the screen. <laughs> and he shows the ceiling, the ceiling fan, you know, the organ <laughs> in the church, everything else but what you're supposed to be looking at, right? Yeah. So we get something like this, you look fine. It's good enough. People can relate to you. They see your eyes. They see. It feels natural. That's what we're we're looking at in the framing. Right. And my next question is, uh, thank you for that. Uh, with such short attention spans, I, I, I started doing this. Uh, my shows originally started out with a commercial and then the intro and then I would intro and blah, blah, blah. So I stopped doing, I, I still have that, but I, I actually come on and like today's episode, I introduced the episode. I introduced you. You you provided with me some with some copy that I used to to kind of tease about what we're going to talk about. Uh, what are some tips on making getting people to 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 tune in and stay stay tuned in? Well, I think all of the stuff that draws people to you to gain trust keeps them interested in you. And then you have to have the message. You have to have something that appeals to their problem, their urgent need. Yeah. You have to say it and present it in ways that they relate to. So, for example, when you when you do a sales video, you need a hook. The hook yeah. is their problem. So right. people with that problem are going to stop surfing. They're going to give you a second or a few seconds or six seconds say, what's this all about? This sounds, sounds like that's my problem. Then how you talk about it, you give examples of that problem in their lives. A good example is, is I did a video on sleep and, and not sleeping at night was the big problem. I just can't get a good night's sleep. Well, why? Well, I can't go, I can't go to bed. Uh, I can't get up. I, when I get up, I'm groggy. I get up in the middle of the night. Uh, I'm restless. You know, all the different situations that are common for people so that when you share those detailed examples it's like testimonies you want three testimonies that's the ideal number to the human mind yeah and each one hits one of the three major buckets or segments of your of your people right of that problem yeah so when you do that then people really pay attention now they're really interested because you do know their problem you understand what they're going through every day and how they feel right yeah. then they want to hear your story they want to hear about you how'd you connect it as long as you're being real and you're connecting like that, it isn't really a matter of how long they'll be interested. It's a matter of at a certain point, you've sold them, right? And right. at that point, it's time to call for action. So you just work with people until you think they thoroughly understand that you understand their problem. They understand the solution, basically. They have you've got given social proof in your testimonies from other people that you know how to get that problem. And then you, you call for action. It's it's a whether you're doing it formally with the program on a webinar or just sitting there talking to somebody in in a in an appointment, it's all the same thing. It's just you get to that natural place that it's time to say, How can I help you? Yeah. 
Gotcha. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I heard your little dog bark in there. My, I, I have a little dog too. She's her name's Bubba. She's a she's a little uh, a, a mini poodle, and she starts she when she starts to bark, then my big dog. Uh, CJ, he's he's a golden retriever, and he starts to bark. And boy, he's got a he's got a big one. Fortunately, uh, that hasn't happened because you probably would hear it. But, well, yeah, uh, I got I got three voodoo's, three little voodoo's, and they were supposed <laughs> to be out on the back porch. Yeah, really yeah. Got in, but you know that's okay. That's uh, fine. We love our dogs. We love our kids. You know, yeah, yeah. life happens. If if you're in a good enough mode, if you feel good about yourself, if you're being a real person then when those kind of things come up, it's not going to chase anybody off. Yeah. And, you know, I, I used to be really focused on editing out the ums and the ahs, but I don't do any of that. Unless I really screw up a section, I might go in and I had to fix one yesterday uh, where I, I flubbed the, the introduction and I mispronounced uh, something. And but I hardly ever do any editing. I just put everything together and and let it go. And that's that's me. And you know, good, bad, and the good, bad, and the ugly. I, I just yep. include and, that. And you know, with with video videos and distractions, you get rid of most of them. If some pop up, then people forgive you for that. People do forgive you. They they have distractions too. You know, we yeah. all. Do. So yeah. if you if you're trying to be slick and perfect. And you have something going on. I, I had a, a, a talking teacher, that, a stage talking teacher that said, well, when I make a mistake, I make a joke out of it. Well, I think when I make a mistake, I correct it and move on. Because yeah. if I make a big deal about it, what are we focused on? We're focused on the mistake. Yeah. We're not still in the mindset, of the flow of my message in our, in our connection to what we're talking about. Yeah, so you, you don't want to interrupt the flow. Restate it and move on. People yeah. forgive you. They're, they're not looking for a silver tongue devil and a slick production. They're looking for real people that they can trust. Right. Well, Roy, I trust you and I, I appreciate you being on. It's I'm so glad we finally had this conversation. Uh, thank you again. With your final words as we wrap up, uh, what are three things that our listeners can do today to put these ideas into action? I think the, the three key issues that, that we've touched on that are critical that will move you forward the fastest is to figure out your distractions, your voodoos, and get rid of them. And that requires a coach like me or friends and associates to sit there and look at you and give you honest feedback from what they see. The second is to get the professional techniques in those five areas we talked about and get them fixed, either from somebody like me in a program or however you can do it. It helps to have a guru do it with you because they know exactly what you need. We focus you just get it on done it. faster. Yeah, get it done faster. Yeah. And the third is to work on the idea with self-confidence that if you can get yourself looking good enough from those two steps, and if you know that your focus is on helping the specific people that really need you, and they need you like a like a second grader thinks a third grader is amazing because that third grader knows something that second grader wants to know, right? So we don't have to be wonderful. That confidence will come when you turn away from yourself and focus on the good that you're doing and the value you're giving other people. You're changing people's lives, and that's right. that's really, really cool. Right. Well, Roy, again, thank you. I know why I now know why you're the video maestro. And wow. thank you so much for uh At least for I you. say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's My hat guy it. says it. That's it. If you got a hat that says it, that's 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 you. Well, I want to uh, thank you for, for working with me on this because w what you do is such a wonderful job of getting people leads, qualified leads to come in and be accessible to them, which is very hard on the internet. That's why a lot of people fail. And and so we are so complimentary in what we do. You bring in the great leads and I tell them how to get the know, like, and trust so they can convert those leads. Right on. Well, Roy has a uh, a couple of gifts here. Number one, you can get a free on-camera gap analysis. Uh, just schedule a call with Roy at calendly.com forward slash Roy Varner. That's R-O-Y-V-A-R-N-E-R. And there will be links on the show notes on the uh, website. 
And also he has a fun and effective three-day challenge starter event uh, for free for our listeners only. Uh, you go to www.royvarner.com forward slash three-day challenge. And that's the numeral three day challenge and use the code Paul Guyon. That's P A U L G U Y O N. And that will work uh, in upper and lower case. Uh, either way, you'll get that course for free. That's a three day challenge, three hours of some of Roy's best stuff. And uh, to get you going, get you started and get rid of some of those voodoo, uh, those, those video voodoos. And uh, so thanks again. And remember, uh, faith and action go hand in hand. So put the pedal to the metal. And until next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show, I'm Paul Guyon and Roy Varner, Varner. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. So long for now. Thank you for tuning into the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show.